In summer of 2017, I finally got the opportunity to visit the Six Flags Park that I had been hearing so much about for quite a long time. This is Six Flags New England, located in Agawam, Massachusetts. They're famous for their Wicked Cyclone and Superman the Ride roller coasters, but they actually have quite a few in their collection and several thrilling flat rides, family attractions, and a full-size water park. So, in this video, I'll be giving my full thoughts on everything. I'm not going to go too much in depth with the roller coasters because I will have separate reviews for them posted sometime down the line if they're not already available. So for this, I'm mainly going to focus on the park and and do note that I did not get a chance to go inside the water park, so I will not be talking about that for this video. Now, first impressions. I gotta say, this park is charming. It looks nice. Sure, there are some characteristics about it, as with all Six Flags parks, that aren't too appealing, such as the advertisements everywhere, kind of cheap looking logos or displays, billboards, that kind of thing. This is definitely an amusement park. There is some theming, but nothing really over the top. Any theme you'll find is going to be very loosely done, if there is any theming at all. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through my day and different observations I picked up on. Probably the first thing I want to mention is something that I thought was odd and I didn't know about until I got there, and that's that the parking lot is on the other side of the street, and you have to walk across a bridge to get to the park. I had no idea about that going in, and I was very surprised when I had to walk up a bunch of M&M stairs to get there. So again, that's what I'm talking about. It's those kind of things that I'm not a big fan of, like the obvious product placement that just looks bad. So as funny as it is that you're walking up M&Ms, not a big fan. We got there pretty early in the day, and the first thing I noticed, I'd been going to Six Flags America for years. It has almost the exact same entrance. So if you've been to Six Flags America and not New England, take note of that. It's like the exact same. Now, it looks nice, so I don't really have any complaints other than that it is, yeah, it's, it's a carbon copy of the entrance at another park. But again, at least it's nicely done, just maybe not the most ideal. So we get inside the park, and we're there at Rope Drop, and I gotta say, I think this is the closest I have ever been to experiencing the Hunger Games in my life. As soon as the rope dropped, it's all these GP school field trip groups, and they just bolt straight for Superman. It felt like the purge. Absolute chaos. I was not a big fan of all these school groups. Like, no offense if you were a part of those school groups, but like, yeah, you guys like kind of suck. It was rather irritating because I'm trying to go ride my ride so I get in Superman's queue line and then there's a ride up saying, hey, if all you kids don't behave, we'll put you back on your school buses. And I'm just like, uh, we're in college. But then I realized that we were the only people there older than 16. So yeah, that I was not a fan of at all. So just beware of that. And while we're talking about rides, this is one of those parks that will not let you re-ride even if the station is completely empty, which when we went there, the park was pretty deserted after around midday when it rained. So the, all the lines were non-existent. We could have stayed in our seats on multiple occasions, but we were told we had to walk around every single time. Park policy. So, not a big fan of that. But I also recognize that this is not the only park with that rule. Now, I want to talk about layout for a bit because this has got a pretty interesting layout. The park is very wide. It doesn't go too far back. But it seems like the back section is mostly for the kids and then like a whole plaza dedicated to Superman in this whole kind of DC area. But some of the DC rides are like spread out. So I don't really know what was going on there. But the area around Superman looked very nice. They had done some great landscaping. I loved all the tunnels and the pathways and you just see the coaster going everywhere. That was really cool. And this is also one of those parks that has several areas with like a decent amount of stairs and steps. You're going to see that back by Superman, and then also when you go up to ride Wicked Cyclone or the New England Sky Screamer. For those two rides specifically, you have to go up a pair of steps and then it splits off for their individual entrances. But those are really the only areas where you have to think about that because of the elevation change. The rest of the park is fairly flat. Now, as a first timer, I found a few areas of this park's layout to be a little confusing. It was kind of a moment where I had to take a step back and say, okay, wait, where am I? One area that I could not even find until someone pointed it out to me was that that canyon pathway where you have Houdini and Tomahawk. They're just kind of tucked away and you really have to know where it is to find it. I believe I passed by that pathway several times before even noticing that it was there. Talking a bit about the food, I actually only ate at one restaurant in this entire park because I ate there for both meals because it was really good. So that's a good sign. 
It's JB's Barbecue. Good stuff, and it's on the dining plan. Dining plan has lots of options. Pretty much everything is on there except for Panda Express, which is a bummer because it is on the Cedar Fair dining plans. So I would highly recommend eating at JB's Barbecue, but unfortunately I am not able to talk about any of the other restaurants in the park because I did not eat there. So I don't know if it's good, if it's bad, if it's mediocre. I, I just don't know. But I think overall thoughts on this park go like this. They have a great amount of rides. There's going to be something for everyone. That being said, if you're a thrill seeker, there's really only going to be a handful of rides that will really appeal to you because you have the two outstanding rides wicked cyclone and superman the ride and then you have batman the dark knight that is pretty good everything else is just kind of okay it's just there it's filler coasters and also they have two boomerangs which is really stupid so when i was there i pretty much just went back and forth between wicked cyclone and superman every once in a while popping in a ride on batman so i'd say coaster collection is pretty good i wouldn't say it's spectacular because really there's only two coasters that will like blow your mind that being said they are both really good. They also have some family coasters. There's an entire Looney Tunes themed areas. There's two main kid sections and both of them I'd say kind of look fine. They look pretty tacky. Kind of your typical Six Flags like cheap attempt at theming. So I mean it looks good enough. So I mean like it's passable but I've definitely seen nicer areas. So to just kind of wrap things up. Final thoughts. Would I recommend this park? I say yes. It's definitely one of those larger, well-known Six Flags parks that you really should get around to at some point if you can. It's not my favorite Six Flags park, but it has a lot of pros to it. The pros outweigh the cons. And the cons are often just silly things, and often they're at a corporate level where you can't just get mad at Six Flags New England because you'll find those same trends at all Six Flags parks. But I remember the staff being pretty friendly, the service to be pretty good. So if you get around to it, I'd say, yeah, definitely give this park a shot. So those are just some of my thoughts on Six Flags New England in Ogawa, Massachusetts. Make sure to post all your thoughts below in the comment section on what you think of this park. If you've been here, if you agree with my thoughts, if there was anything I missed, anything you disagree with, you can let me know down below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews coming soon to Coaster Studios.